start investing into other things and venturing out and doing other things. And once I started doing other things, I realized I didn't want to be boxed in just as no braider. Correct. So. Okay, so we're going to back it up a little bit. So before this phenomenal braider and these lady that wore many hats, what actually uh, ended you up being a part of the street life? Um, your phone is breaking up. I can't hear you. Hold on. So before, um, so we go back it up a little bit. So before you became this phenomenal braider and the person that wears the woman that wears many hats, who were you before then? I was a street hustler. Okay. How did you end up being in the street life? Huh? How did you end up being a part? Well, like I say, I get it from family members. Right. Um, that's all I see growing up as a child. I didn't see anything else. I didn't see um, going to school, um, working for a corporate America. Mm -hmm. I didn't see those things growing up. All I seen was hustle. Right. And it was hustling drugs, stealing. That, that's what I seen. So basically, that's what I that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I did what I seen. Right. Have you ever been to jail before? I went. Um, I stayed in there for two days. Mm -hmm. I, I I never um I never been to prison or anything like that. But I stayed in jail for like two days. It don't matter how I, many days, because one day in jail is forever. Man, that was like forever for me. So, <laughs> and then and it, I mean, it, and it, it made me change my perspective on life the last time. I mean, I had been to jail a few times that I was able to bond right out. But this particular time when I went in, I couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. I had to stay in and right. see the judge. So it was like, man. Those nasty meals. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Waking up in the, mm -mm, mm -mm, them mm -mm. keys, mm -mm, that ain't it. Have, yeah, having to bathe in front of everybody, having to take your clothes out in front of the offices and cough and bend over. And yeah, that was too much for me. Right. Yeah, that's a that's really hard. That's that's not a good thing. It don't matter if you go to prison or not. One day is too much to be in jail. Once yeah. you experience that, some people don't want to do it at all. Right. Right. So you say um you were married before. How yeah. did um was that like a good relationship? Or was it like a toxic relationship? How was that relationship? The first three years I would say it was good. Mm -hmm. But after that, everything like it spiraled, spiraled out of control. It was um, toxic. Mm -hmm. um, I went through verbal abuse, mental abuse, uh, physical abuse. Mm -hmm. I, I went through a lot in that, in that, in that marriage. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say the first three years, but after that, everything went downhill. It was like gaslighting. We're going to make this perfect honeymoon scene. And then once you got to unfold who you really are and truly are, those things tend to come out. It happens. Right. Right. And you don't really get, you right. really don't know a person until you move in. Right. With them. And then you start learning that person. And then once they tell you like their upbringing and the things that they see, you got to prepare yourself for it because they're going to do the same thing they see. Right. And see his situation. Um, he grew up seeing his father beat his mom, um, disrespect her. So, unfortunately, he started, you know, do the same thing. Right. So, and it tends to be a pattern until we have to break those generational curses. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, um, so, in your life, you have so many things going on. So, how have you grown? Like, what allowed you to grow as a person to be able to wear, you know, to do so many things, to stay so positive, to be...